Welcome everyone. Um, I'm Gonzalo. I'm here with Oleg and Reto. We're gonna use the mic. Hmm? The microphone. Uh, it's actually just to record. Yeah, I wanted to say that. Yeah, so we're we're going to pass around the mic. Uh, it's just for the recording. Um, so yeah, just a quick introduction of of us. Uh, I started when working with uh, with Oleg and Reto in organizing a hackathon about two years ago that was uh, called Make Zurich. And yeah, we got involved in this conversation about how to ensure that we, we create an environment for hackathons in which uh, the conditions are fair for co-creation. And um, yeah, want to introduce yourself? Sure. So. Uh, yeah, so my name is Oleg and I've been uh, participating in the open source movement for maybe about 10 years, I don't know. So I know about um, about the kind of the, some of the things that uh, Simon Phipps was talking about in the keynote earlier on, some of the ways that open source gets developed. I still need, I'm still looking, I, I know that my next mission is now to look for a senior person to really understand all the skeletons they have in the cupboard. But basically I've been coming out to hackathons and uh, just coding parties and trying to contribute to open source um, since the beginning. That was basically my primary interest in the open source movement, was to have a chance to do something outside of my regular work. Regularly I work as a software developer, I work on web software projects, on data management projects. I have a, a small studio here in Bern. And um, yeah, so for, for the last couple of years we've been organizing this amazing open hardware event. And besides that I work at, uh, uh, I, I, I don't work there, but I help to run the association Open Data CH which organizes regular hackathons. We've been doing this for like eight years now and we don't have, we don't plan on slowing down. So that's me and I'll pass this on to Reto. Hi everyone, I'm Reto from Open Data Zurich. I'm, I've been working there now for four years. Um, and yeah, during the work with Open Data Zurich, I got into hackathons. I've never been to a hackathon before, but now we organize hackathons together with Gonzalo, Gonzalo and Oleg. And yeah, we, are, we have now made two editions of this Make Zurich IoT hackathon, and we're talking about the third edition now. And of course, we try to improve from year to year. We don't want to do it every year the same way. And so I'm very looking forward to what's coming out of this session today. Okay, so um, one of the, the, um, the topics that started this conversation was every, every week in Switzerland and in the world in general, there are like hundreds of hackathons uh, taking place. And in the end, it's very hard for a participant to decide which one to join? How do you decide which hackathon makes sense? Because the term hackathon has been um, uh, slightly abused, let's say, and is used for everything from from a, from a coding party uh, in in a in a garage to a corporate event with uh, IP protection uh, or non-disclosure agreements, for instance, or things like that. Um, so one of the things we want to do today, all of us together, is to work out how do you decide um, which hackathon to join. And that will lead us into what is a hackathon, um, what are the differences between like, these different events and... So, so question first of all, does anyone not know what a hackathon is? Here, okay. So. The first question is actually something we'd like to address to you. Um, we'd like to ask each one of you to say very quickly uh, something about yourself and what's the last hackathon you've been at? And, and if there's one that you're planning to go to, tell us about that as well. So we'll just pass the mic around and ask you to, to take turns just saying, Hi, I'm Bob. I've been to a hackathon last year and I'm going to one next year. Please. Oh, I'm not involved. Are oh, you starting with me? <laughs> okay, my name is Simon. Um, 
somehow in preparation of, of this meeting I, I researched when my first public open source contribution was and in next January it will be 30 years ago, so before the term was coined. Um, as some probably know, I'm fairly involved in uh, OpenStreetMap movement and uh, my interest in the, in the specifics is more are hackathons a way to increase participation in software development in OpenStreetMap, which is a big issue, and in, in general interest in making the output of hackathons more sustainable than they tend to be uh, being very nasty I would say that typically they the, the sustainable part ends the next day um, so that is one of my core interests and I'll be going off to a hack week end at four o'clock today in Karlsruhe um, so that's the next one I'm participating in okay I'm Benny I'm for a living, I'm a math teacher, so my coding is crap, so that's why I don't attend hackathons. But I'm more interested how you could use hackathons from, from an, an educational standpoint. So that's more or less all I have to say. Um, I'm Luca. I <laughs> haven't been to any hackathons, and currently, to be honest, I'm not planning to attend one in the future, but I just chose, chose this session because I found it was looked kind of interesting. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm Matthew, I'm a system engineer and I haven't attended uh, any hackathons uh, as uh, up to now, but I've always been interested in how projects worked up. I'm um, like, for for example, the OpenBSD project makes organizes hackathons and they realized that they have to First, the issue is how to integrate things upstream after the results and how to make the hackathons attractive to people to join and to make not only a hack session but have something around so people enjoy uh, being there. I'm Marcel. My last hackathon was last month uh, in Berlin uh, with the next cloud guys. Um, and I'm organizing what's not really a hackathon this winter. So we do have uh, uh, for our students uh, open source software development course where they where we try to get them into the field without having to go actually to a hackathon. But maybe we could take some advantage of some of the concepts and some of the results here. <coughs> Hey, I'm Nada. I'm a researcher and I'll have a project on Hackathon starting in January 2019 together with Oleg. And I'm particularly interested in questions of inclusion and sustainability. So I haven't been to a Hackathon yet, but I read a lot about uh, Hackathons in uh, the literature, especially by sociologists. So looking at the precarization of work, uh, co-optation, uh, all the critical stuff. So. Yeah. <coughs> Hi, my name is Miriam. Uh, I haven't attended a, a, a hackathon, but I attended a time-bounded event that was, um, its purpose was to recreate the experience of Musea. And I'm just generally interested in these events where people with different backgrounds come together and create some project in a, with this limitation of time. Hi, I'm Matthias. I'm working for a local newspaper and uh, I did cover a couple of uh, hackathons in, in the past, uh, writing about them. And I joined the, the Tourism Hack Day, which was a great event last year. And uh, now I'm interested about the discussions because there's, for example, the, the hack days of, of the local soccer team, the Young Boys, which is more the corporate probably uh, kind of hack days. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this discussions here. Hi everyone, I'm Nikki from Open Data CH. I organize hackathons or as we usually call it hack days 
the last hackathon I attended was the Open Food Data Hack Days, and the next one that I will attend and co-organize is the Multilingualism 4.0 Hack Days, which is about the future of language intercultural exchange within Switzerland. Um, and I'm also very interested in the topics of how can Hack Days create sustainable impact and value for everyone, what are the conditions that make a, a hackathon or similar events um, fair for, for all the participants. As you mentioned, there are more and more corporate and commercial Hack Days. Um, and what are other formats that allow people of different backgrounds to come together and create something that they care about and, and so together solve social problems. Yeah, hello everyone, my name is Chris, I'm a researcher and uh, we do some basic coding at research but my main purpose why I'm here is um, I have the feeling that the research industry is quite conservative and not very collaborative so I I'm interested how hackathons can move and uh, can move the entire science industry forward and progress it. I'm Ido. I'm working as a software engineer for, for a company who keeps its source code very secretly. Uh, I've never been to a hackathon, but I, I find the idea very interesting, and that's why I came to the meeting today. I'm Katarina. I'm from the statistical office of Zurich. I was at one hackathon at Twist, that's a statistical hackathon. I was a participant there and um, it was really nice to see people of different backgrounds bring new ideas, learning from each other. And now we are organizing a challenge for our next hackathon, that's the Digital Day in Zurich. And I'm very interested in learning how you best prepare a challenge because I see that the organizing of the challenge, the data you bring, and also the metadata and the documentation is very important for the participants because else they have to spend a lot of time on getting this information before they can start with their work. Thank you very much, Katrina. And everyone, thank you for sharing your insights. And I think we'll def... Oh, sorry. Thank you everyone for sharing a bit of yourself, a bit of your stories, and I, I've jotted down a lot of keywords there about your interests. We're going to keep, try to make this workshop as interactive as possible, and for this reason, thank you, Reto, for bringing these red and green flyers. Do you want to explain how we're going to use them while I pass them around? Yeah, the idea, you kind of already mentioned some of these things, but uh, um, the idea is that we uh, write down what is attractive to you about a hackathon and what is de detracting you to join a hackathon. You know, what are the kind of the pros and cons of hackathons from your perspective? Um, we'll use that later to try to work out how, like a flow chart, a decision tree on how can you, you know, judge if a hackathon is like the right thing for you or not. Positives and negatives, things that attract you to the hackathon, like oh, so uh, for attending a hackathon, yeah. Or if you attended, what what is like what was the highlight of it, and why would you re-attend an event? So the the point is that you don't need to like come up with all these ideas now. This is something that will the idea is that we'll we'll do this actually during the workshop. And if you want more paper, you can just grab more. Um, and um, 
the goal of this exercise is actually we need your help. And what we'd like your help with is a project that we've been working on for, for the last uh, months, a year, give or take, um, which is to, to improve the way we explain hackathons, publish hackathons, like, and, and, and really understand the results of, of the events themselves as well. Um, our, our goal of is to create an actual product um, which will which which will you can all benefit from pretty soon um, at least in the form of a poster which will help participants of future events to decide whether to come or whether to to stay so we've like like we've, we there aren't only just a range of different kind of kinds of hackathons i mean there's 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 not just uh, you know the levels we talked about from student event to corporate uh, hr exercise there are also very different styles of events and there, and and there's different trading factors and that's what we'd like to learn from you what would motivate you to go to your first hackathon luca for example or uh, or what what kind of things are you're 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 looking for if you're trying to encourage, you know, writes and press about a hackathon, what, what attracts popular interest in, in the case of Matthias. Or, or in your case, what would may maybe potentially convince your company to open up some part of its product in the form of a hackathon, these kind of things, right? And those would be the, the elements of some kind of code we could come up with together, a process, a flowchart, which would help people decide in the future. Um, but because quite a few of you have said, I've never been to a hackathon before, um, well, there's two things. First of all, if you look at today's program, at 6 o'clock is the hack night. So you really have not much of an excuse not to go to your first hackathon today, because that's something we have planned. And we're going to be um, taking all the projects which are mentioned at DinaCon, all the nominations, all the projects we're working on, and spending uh, just the evening working through them. And I don't know, um, what you have here on the on the board is is a is a link. So if you, if any one of you have has a computer open, you can put in bit.ly IP of CC. Um, this is our notes for this workshop, and it's where we'll continue to expand with all the thoughts and suggestions that come out from here. There's also at the top of that page a link to a reading list, which uh, which Nada and several other people have helped us to combine. Um, and, and Mariam as well, thank you very much for giving us kind of the initial kicks to do the session. I mean, the basic thing that we'd like to also, I'd also like to express today is that hackathons are a real thing. It's not just a strange thing you read about in the computer IT press. It's not just something that software geeks go to. Um, hackathons have established themselves in the popular uh, opinion. <laughs> it's something that, that's, a, that's a real kind of event format, like a symposium, maybe, you know, researchers go to a symposium, people who are interested in technology go to a hackathon. But also hackathons have established themselves as, uh, as, as, a, as a discipline, and it's something that is being actively researched, and there's a lot of literature about it already. So there are people like Nada around the world trying to understand the effect of a hackathon. And this is all really interesting and very new. And there have only been like one or two conferences, you know, in just in the last couple of years to try to understand what is actually happening at these hackathons. So we've been doing this for a long time without really understanding the implications of what we're doing. And so to help you think about these attractors and detractors, we've come up with a few keywords that we'd like to explain today. Um, yeah, I mean, the first one is hackathon itself. Uh, like, um, just to define it for the sake of completeness, an event where programmers and others meet and they collab collaboratively develop software or hardware or some, some digital uh, thing. I think till that point everyone is on the same page, right? Uh, one, perhaps one thing that I would like to mention here is that hackathons ha have an origin in kind of counterculture, but they've become mainstream now. And what we're seeing partially is this struggle, you know, when when something that was uh, countercultural becomes mainstream, it has to fight for its own identity, you know, not to be corporatized, not to be uh, assimilated into something that it doesn't want to be. 
Um, the other topic that was mentioned by Yuna is this exploitation. Um, it, there was one particular um, article, I don't know if Oleg, are you going to show it? Um, there was one particular study as, uh, from a group of sociologists in the US that analyzed hackathons and they found uh, basically that in certain settings some hackathons are being used by corporations to exploit people and get basically free labor. Uh, which is the other term, like labor or job precarization, with, um, <coughs> that is basically turning turning development work into something like bastardizing and making it cheap, right? The yeah precarization. The the full definition would be from sociology a condition of exi existence without predictability, predictability, or security which affects the material and psychological we welfare. Um, I don't know how many of you here are familiar with the linked data, semantic web idea, but basically you can combine all of human knowledge into a big graph where everything is represented by three things, a subject, an object, and a predicate. So I'm just going to write out the three things that Gonzalo's mentioned, and I think these should help us to understand a little bit the context through, from which we're coming from. In the meantime, from for the the those of you who did attend the hackathons, did you ever feel felt exploited in there? <laughs> like as a personal uh, experience, did you feel that you were there and you were only serving a corporate purpose, or did you feel something like that? Anyone who wants to share opinion? Or did you feel any like? Did you feel the opposite? In, in, in an event, did you feel that you were getting more than you were giving out? You know, exploiting would mean the opposite in a way. Uh, Thank you. So the hackathons I participated, I always co-organized, so I don't really count as a normal participant. But what I perceive, because I organized these hackathons with the aim to have a social impact and not with the aim to help corporates, but at the same time, we need to finance the, the location, the food, etc. And it's always like, it feels like a balance and it, at one point, uh, one side is stronger and the other one, and not uh, the another side is stronger so usually in the beginning especially when the corporates want to present themselves then it feels very much like okay are we doing this now for, for this corporate organization are they determining where all of this goes who owns uh, what we do etc and then these questions arise and and there's like a little bit an awkward feeling in the room but it feels like as soon as the challenges and the projects ideas are being presented which at our hack days come from everywhere, from participants, from academia, from startups, uh, social groups, etc. Then everyone starts to feel excited again and we remember why why we come together to, to solve a problem or create new solutions. And also during the hackathon, during these 24 to 48 hours, everybody just focuses on, on the goal that they uh, chose themselves. So. From that point on, to my mind, everything feels very impactful and valuable. Thank you. More opinions? Do you want to say, share something about? Well, it's it's kind of the same situation for me. I've never been to a hackathon as as just a pure participant. It's as you said. I've always been co-organizing the events, 
so it's hard to discuss on that topic for me. Um, but I think in the, the hackathons I co-organized, I would say it, was, it wasn't the case that anyone has been exploited. Um, yeah, M maybe Gonzalo can, can talk about this as well. He's been co-organizing the same <laughs> events as I did. <laughs> No, um, I mean, for examples of exploitation, the ones mentioned in this study are, are relatively clear. Um, the event, uh, the, sorry, the study focuses on uh, a sampling of seven hackathons in, in, the, in New York or in the East Coast of the US, and they are all clearly corporate events. It's like the MasterCard hackathon, and uh, it's not the same kind of events that we've been organizing. And, and there it's more or less um, clear that you might, you might feel that you're like, just working, you're just giving out your free, your, your weekend for a company to innovate because they lack the, the either they lack the, the methodology internally or the mechanics internally to innovate or just because they, they want to exploit you. <laughs> Maybe just um, not from my own experience, from, but from how I read the literature. I think the question is really, it's not exploitation as like slavery, but what, they, what people are worried about is there's value that is created. And the question is, how is it redistributed? Who benefits from the value? And I think in North America, increasingly, we see that corporate sponsored hackathons are really used as a way to... Um, um, get ideas and innovation and they cut back the funding of research and development departments. So they kind of outsource the idea of innovation and that's the critical trend I think these sociologists have observed. But it's, it, it's just, um, it might also be a question maybe here in Switzerland we don't see that and maybe it makes a big difference if we talk about corporate sponsored hackathons and um, as you mentioned the f food hack day, I, I think there's probably a, it's a very different, um, from the beginning, a different goal because it, it, it looks for a social impact and a social problem and not really um, this corporate sponsored challenge that might turn into a profitable innovation or whatever. So I, I think this, this might be a, a, an important element to consider what kind of, what nature is the, is the hackathon and for which purpose is it? being conducted. I'm just putting up some photos of recent events like the Twist Hackathon that Toretto and Gonzalo and, I and um, many other people here at the conference today organized. And, and like, uh, I think that <laughs> one of the things that it's, it, it's really like, Luca, what you said, I don't, uh, sorry, Benny, you said my coding is crap. Right, and I mean that's like that's the the fundamental thing that's uh, that's that's really hackathons try to overcome, you know, and they have been absolutely in primal of primal importance. I think we forgot to mention this at the beginning, but like l t talking about the open source movement, you know, your in your experience, maybe you can give us a little bit of a more uh, uh, accurate perspective. But I I've been t I've been part of several projects that have started at hackathons and become initiatives, companies, you know, have created real value for society or for the people involved. That's always the point of a hackathon, to create something, whether it's code or just connections with other people or just have an experience. But this, this kind of, this, uh, this, what makes hackathons special is definitely the relationship with technology. And hackathons were very much used over the decades by the open source community, by other communities, to seed interest into mostly technical projects you know there's open street map but it's empty there's a great idea for a web server but we need to we need to flesh out some modules for it you know bless you um, in the case of the uh, the hackathons that 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 Nikki and I will work on these open food hack days um, or just open data hack days there's these data resources and you have this chicken and egg problem if nobody uses the data why should it be published if, if nobody publishes data, who's going to use it, right? So hackathons are instrumental to, 
to, to bridging these kind of gaps. Um, and they also have social significance. If you go to a hackathon, you have a certain kind of expectation. And a lot of it is unwritten. That's the point. That's what we've been trying to put together guidelines, l l l you know, look at the literature also to see how do people um, describe hackathons around the world. Yeah, in the end, I mean, there is room for, uh, for most kinds of hackathons, even the corporate ones. Uh, they do have a place in, in, in our society. Um, for instance, I was once invited to a hackathon by a, by a company in Zurich, and I, in the end, I declined the invitation because the, they were binding conditions on the outcome, right? So I, whatever I would produce was legally bound to like, belong to the company. This, th that is, for example, where that is my detractor. Um, but there are other, like highly corporatized uh, events out there that do not have these kind of conditions. They still have a framing in which you know, you're, you're building something for, for a, a big company anyway, but uh, maybe, maybe you like the company, maybe you like the product, maybe you just, you just want to explore the technology that they are producing, or you, you just want to have fun, or you're just going for the drinks, whatever, and the networking. Uh, there is a place for every kind of hackathon. And that's what Ole wanted, uh, was, was saying. Um, we want to basically nail down or write down what are the expectations that you have. How can you see from, <coughs> from an event if it's going to match your expectations? Is this event going to be uh, one in which I'm allowed to take whatever I did? Uh, do I care about it? So I would like to suggest that I see some of you have filled out your stickers. I think I'd like to put some of them on on this board now and just hear from you what your thoughts. Do you mind if I and if I if I do do the, uh, have the honor of putting your suggestion up first yes. as one of the distractors? I didn't put anything on the, on the red one, but, um. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't put anything on the, on the red one, but I I think the detractors for me would be very similar to uh, contributing to open source projects in general. I want, if I'm spending my free time, non-paid time on a project, I actually want the output of that to be reusable by other people, by myself, and, uh, and linking into what I said initially, I would like the project itself to be sustainable in some form, so not just vanish the next day, so that actually some value has been created. So that's a detractor? Or uh, well, well it, it <laughs> that's a, an attractor would be contributing to something which is going to have a longer lifetime. And a detractor is clearly anything which will simply vanish the next day. Why should I spend a weekend or a day uh, writing code for something which will not have a longer lifetime? Okay. Outside of perhaps proof of concept for something which you actually want to build down the road. Yeah, that's, that's a real uh, issue, I think, for the community. I think f when when we when I think about what the sponsors or the organizers want, they're really focused on the short-term yeah. results. They only care to see if people have a good time, which is great. They care about do we can we recruit one, a, a developer? Okay, re re legitimate. Um, th they might care about the proof of concept, but more like in a throwaway sense, right? But as a community, if we think about using hackathons. By the way, it, for you who have been to hackathons, have you ever heard of Hacker Garten? Hacker Garten? Okay, I'll come back to that. But basically, the, the, the lifetime, the, exp the life expectancy of your projects is may, or, uh, may also not be very important to the participants. You know, you, you come there for a good time, you're just in, stuck in a team. But I think you definitely have like a viewpoint there of someone who, who is interested in the, in the longer-term consequences. Benny? I wrote this out. Do you mind if I stick it on the board? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, I'd, I'd rather... 
I mean, that, that's basically the reason why I haven't been at the hackathon yet, but this doesn't mean I will never attend one. And uh, I would rather put on a, something on a green card, and this is learning from, from others. Because <laughs> I think a valuable, valuable hackathon for me would be a, a place where I go where there are people who know things I don't know, maybe I know things they don't know, and we work together and, and in the process of wor working together we learn from, from each other. I mean, that's, that's the upside from a hackathon as compared to just working in your own office and talking to no one. That's perfect. Did you want to add another one besides? That was it. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> I haven't really um, <laughs> wrote that much, but yeah. Also for me, uh, it would be um, I really I really like the idea so that I can collaborate with people. So I'm not really <laughs> I'm in still in still in training in my company. So I'm not really that fond of coding <laughs> or it's not really my main focus in my training but I really like the idea with uh, for collabor collaborating with other people and learning from the people even if I can just uh, add l small little things to the great to the great picture <laughs> and hopefully get a sticker while you're at it can I put that up on the board? Uh, yes. Or do you want to f f finish it first? I don't know. Uh, yes. So uh, I think, if possible, if there is reusability, as was first mentioned, uh, so I don't, it's not an exclusive thing that I will that is owned by the company. So I wasn't aware because that there were actually a company-sponsored uh, ha such hackathons. I was only aware of more open source-like uh, hackathons. So. If there is something produced, uh, what is an attractor for me is if it really gets integrated, as I first mentioned. But it's also good if there are experimental bubbles where things can be thought out and just get, uh, get written on paper and only written out later on, uh, since you, you have people get in, in a room and think about new projects. So there is also the mentoring aspect that is very interesting to me, which would really attract me. <coughs> so I'd like to follow up uh, to uh, Benny there. <laughs> Sorry to pick on you. Um, I I think so. Nobody would say that you should be able to write uh, a book without having first had to uh, to read other books. So. And I think what, what we're not doing, and where I think open source and hackathons are, are a very important mechanism, is that we can get people to read others' code and, and read from that code and, and learn. So I, I learned all my programming languages by looking at piece of code, mostly. And then later on, I read some of the, the documentation as well. Um, now it's the easiest thing, so because programming languages are typically reasonably structured, so of course there are programming languages where you don't get far without the documentation, um, uh, but but most of them are are halfway self-explanatory, and and I think that that's one of the the the, the important parts that learning from each other, uh, so. Uh, uh, the socializing and networking aspects, and to actually get together, because otherwise, yeah, you you're staying in your own room, um, maybe in the dark, uh, uh, to to put up those uh, typical uh, bad pictures of, of hackers and so on. Um, but actually, trying to get to people and and drink a juice with them or, or whatever. Uh, is an important aspect of it. And, and the other important aspect, I think, is um, you get to achieve some results. And at the end, you can say, hey, I did achieve something. And people are using it. 
And I think these are, uh, yeah, some of the main motivators uh, that we use there. But the the other side is then always, yeah, what what should I do uh, to get people motivated? It's it's not really a detractor, but it's. As the organizer, it's the question of how to make it attractive enough, and and this is the challenge: how to get the right get the right people attracted to that event. So, which which may be so they they're spending travel, uh, they're reserving their time, so they yeah would like to have something back in return, and and how do we give them that ahead of time? In the end, they know, hey, I've this and this thing now works better, or we've mapped that part of, of OpenStreetMap. Um, but how to get that enthusiasm in ahead of time, I think, is a big challenge. Okay, do you want me to continue? Yes. I, I think there's a lot of redundancy now, so I also wrote down a new perspective. There's potential for learning. I like the idea of a community, of doing something together. Uh, and I think, especially when I think of the social hackathons, there's really also this element of meaningful activity. So, you know, besides your office job, maybe there's a potential for, you know, contribute to a to something good, like access, open data, so food security, whatever it is. So I think these are the attractors. And then the detractors for me, like I said, is the question of who benefits, what benefit or value is really produced. It's the question of inclusion and exclusion. How do we make it more inclusive and actually include people who, who would profit from whatever innovation we develop, and the question of sustainability. Uh, well, as I agree with you that there's a lot of repeated words uh, already coming out. Uh, well, I think I want to pick on something that you just mentioned it's like how do we pick the right people so who's the right people to attend <clears throat> because i often uh, see in the promotions of uh, hackathons like all levels of coding or whatever it's welcome but is it really who's desired who's the people that are desired to attend i think for myself that i'm also crappy at coding i feel this barrier very strongly like am i really desired uh, with this level of that particular skill, maybe others are important too. Uh, am I really desired at this particular event? So I think, yeah, this how do we attract the right people? It's a question that, yeah, that uh, it's important for the topic. And how to make sense of all the projects, all the data. I think going back to what you were saying earlier, like how do we, um, make sure that people can find what's in there and work with it later on. So those are parts of the detractors. Uh, but attractors, I like the aspect that conversations come from multiple sides. And even though the expertise is so different from everyone, it quickly moves to doing and there is an output in the end. Even if it dies the next day, there's something that was built very quickly. So uh, this problem-solving mindset, it's a uh, yeah, very strong uh, part of it. Well, my job is shifting um, uh, right now from, from writing to programming to, to data stuff. And I joined uh, the last hack day because I wanted to, to see how the, the pros re really develop code, how they do a project, how they collaborate. And that was the, 
the most interesting thing there. Uh, how can we build in in a couple of minutes uh, a team that really works together? And uh, how do they, they in, a, in such a collaboration, work together? Because everyone is focused on their own machine, but you have to break it up, you have to discuss. So that was the learning for me. How do the real developer develop code? And the, the uh, point on the red, red sheet for me, uh, that's, that's the reason why I didn't uh, join a lot of hack days right now. Uh, often they are in the spare, spare time. Um, so, of course, I agree with everything that was put on there. What's missing to me on the attractor side um, more clearly is to solve so society's challenges. That's uh, what motivates me in pretty much everything I do. And that's also what motivates me about hack days and hackathons. And on the negative side, I have two things I, th I think that were in pointed out that time dedication on one side that's like we we all don't have a lot of spare time but on the other side it's also determining on this weekend i will do this and i'll stick to that plan because there are loads of events there are loads of things to do and then when the sun comes out on the weekend uh, probably you decide to do something else and that's also a problem of hackathons that many people who register spontaneously don't show up so I think that's uh, a problem of, of our generation as well. And on the negative side as well, and that's what you are trying to solve, is the many, many unknowns. What people are there, what projects are going to be presented, what challenges, will I like the food, will I get along, will it be fun, is the data in good quality, etc. There's so many unknowns. If, if you would know that all of this is perfect, I'm sure everybody would show up. But I think that's one of the, the crucial ex aspects. Yeah, for me, as I said, I never joined a hackathon which was called hackathon. <laughs> so in academia, it's more called, I don't know, symposium or stuff like this. So, but in general, what I think is the biggest attractor to me is like you can, can kind of achieve a wisdom of the crowd effect. So. Um, the crowd is much more wise than me myself, and I see that also when I publish my code. And like, yeah, suddenly you get some random, <laughs> uh, some random guy helping you in improving your code, which is great, of course. <laughs> and yeah, and I feel also valuable when I can give back something. So this is the biggest attractor uh, for me. The disadvantages are sometimes like usually we publish also data so our data is usually open we follow the open data principles but open science principles but sometimes you just can't because when i have gps data of of uh, humans or yeah and i need to analyze that i cannot make that publish it's from an ethical perspective just not possible and this is one of the for me like a restriction to participate just a legal restriction to participate in in hackathons or in symposiums. Yeah, and everything else was already said, I think. Uh, my time, obviously, is spare and all this kind of stuff, yeah. Well, I just thought something very general that I, I need to have some interest in the project. And it could be like you, like he said, either, you know, I find it cool and I might want to use it myself, or I think it has some, the society can use it, but it can also be just a, a proof of concept or a throwaway, but I think it's cool to try it out. So, um, But I also think that, well, I've never been a hackathon, but there must be some extra value than, you know, online cooperation, cooperation because, you know, today you could just, you could just check it out from GitHub and you can, you could do, you know, cooperative software from home and I wonder what's what the benefit you can actually what's the benefits in actually really sitting together in the same room rather than cooperating from home.
Yeah, I'm the last person to give feedback and most points have already been said. I have one uh, detractor which I want to mention and that's unexperienced programmers don't dare to participate and I think that's a very big problem. I uh, studied geography and I also have to admit during my studies we didn't have to program and during my master's thesis then I had to program and to learn and for me in the research unit I had people who supported me, who showed me, who gave me advice, who gave me books, who showed me many things which I didn't dare to do, never. So I think it would be really helpful to offer workshops and so that people who come from social science or from other areas who don't, I don't know, just don't dare to come to show them how, why is GitHub, why is GitHub useful, why shouldn't we use spreadsheets, why is R useful and just the motivation. Thank you. Reto? Yeah, I think um, it's, a, it's great that you were the last person because I'm a ge geographer as well and I didn't have to learn to program or we didn't program until the very end of this, um, the studies. Um, so I think that's, that's also, in my perspective, a quite important point that you have during the hackathons that what we try to implement, that you have a parallel session with workshops that learn inexperienced coders how to code. I think that's something um, important. Um, something that I think is, I can put it to the attractors or the detractors, depending on the first syllable, um, is the transparency or the intransparency about the terms. Um, I think that's something we discussed in the beginning. As long as it's transparent that the outcome belongs to the organizer, to the company or whatever, I can decide by myself, do I want to contribute or do, do I not want to contribute? I think transparency is key in this, in this area. And the other thing I experienced with Make Zurich is um, we are talking about openness and inclusive, inclusive stuff, but I think access to something new or exclusive is something that attracts people. For example, when you have access to data or infrastructure that outside of the hackathon you would not have access, that's a great incentive to attend the hackathon. Thanks very much, Reto. Um, from my side, I just wanted to catch, I caught a couple of keywords in there that did not make it on the board, I think. The offline factor really is something we shouldn't forget. And yes, there are a lot of online hackathons. Small ones happening every weekend, you just get, you know, people just agree to meet up on IRC, Twitter, Slack and just hack away the problem. And huge one, which are, you know, sometimes have tens of thousands of participants over, over a stretch of days. But definitely the, off, the, on, the offline factor and, and going completely offline, even going into the woods, just being one on one with these people and the technology is definitely. And, and then, you know, the, the, the original one that I think we need to really not forget is the hacking. Um, the, f the fact that several of you mentioned, the, 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 the exclusivity is a little bit like that, but also just the fact that you, you don't have to have a diploma to participate in a hackathon. You, know, it's, you don't need a license you, to join it. You just join and do what you can. And that kind of spirit is really, really important to conserve. And one thing that I just personally think, uh, feel ca quite passionate about is the healthiness of hackathons. A lot of hackathon goers or organizers seem to feel that we need to have pizza and Coca-Cola <coughs> um, and, and just uh, hack like crazy and not sleep and I'm not sure about that. I mean, it's in the similar vein to um, them being kind of like inside of your, you know, uh, weekend time and uh, away from your family. Why, why aren't hackathons uh, something we do at work more often? And uh, the central question is the unfairness. I think, <laughs> I think maybe this is something that, that really needs a bit more of a more prolonged, more deep in debate. I hope that this workshop today has helped you to get a get kind of a glimpse of some of the issues and, dis and questions and hopefully this leads to further questions. My goal is that next year, last year we had at DinaCon 2017, we had uh, Bibi Blockbear from Fairphone coming to show her fair technology product and that by next year we'll have kind of like a fair trade sort of label for hackathons, which helps people to make a, just a differentiated decision about how their time is actually being used. That's kind of my goal. Yep. And if you join tonight at the hack night, we can keep working on this. 
and try to actually build this uh, flowchart that uh, Oleg mentioned. And if 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 you're interested in the final result of that, leave your postal like physical address, and then we will print it nicely and send it to you later. <laughs> Were there any uh, last questions before we wrap up? Any hackathons you're extremely keen to advertise? Okay, so at the very beginning, uh, several of you mentioned hackathons you're going to, and there's definitely the one today at six o'clock. Um, not sure how we can do this, but sure. Actually, why not? We'll, we'll on the on this web page. So hacknight.dinacon.ch. That's the web page where we have challenges for tonight. Open source projects which need attention. But we can actually just use that to announce upcoming events. So if any of you have hackathons you would like us to uh, everyone to know about, uh, let me know or, or I'll show you how to edit this page so you can just put a link right in front of all our participants this evening. Okay? Thank you very much for coming out to the workshop and enjoy the rest of DinaCon. <laughs>